University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Two Cambridge colleges, Emmanuel and St John's, have already gone through to the quarterfinals of this competition. Six places remain to be taken, and one of them will go to tonight's winners. For the losers, though, it's curtains. The University of Warwick had something of a walkover in their first round match against the team from York University, winning by 240 points to 80 in a fixture that gave them ample opportunity to shine on the events of 1817, US presidential elections and Robert Baden poll. We'll see if tonight's match can give them some stiffer competition. With an average age of 24, let's meet the Warwick team again. Hi, I'm Flora Jackson. I'm originally from York. And I'm studying English with creative writing. Hello, I'm Daniela Rivas. I'm from Madrid and I'm studying maths. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Ben Salter. I'm originally from Wiverliscombe in Somerset and I'm reading mathematics. Hello, I'm Charlotte Simmons. I'm from the Welsh Borders area and I'm studying for an MA in writing. Now, the team from Ulster University lost their first round match against the University of Edinburgh but by only a five-point margin and survived as one of the highest-scoring losing teams and then beat St Anne's College Oxford in their playoff by a margin of 175 to 90 when they were impressive on Polish composers, the Suez Canal and the erotic conceits of John Donne. Let's meet them again. Hello, I'm Cahill McDade from Bunkrana in County Donegal and I'm studying for a Master's in English Literature. Hi, I'm Kate Ritchie. I'm from Waringstown, County Armagh, and I study fine art. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Ian Jack. I'm originally from Peterhead in Aberdeenshire, and I'm reading for a PhD in pharmacy. Hi, my name is Matthew Milliken. I'm from Cumber in County Down, and I'm doing a PhD in education. <laughs> the rules, as you know, never change, so fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. The story of the Malacand Field Force and the River War, an historical account of the reconquest of the Sudan, were early published works by which major figure of the 20th century? In 1953, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. Ulster Jack. Winston Churchill. Correct. <laughs> the first set of bonuses are on a French region, Ulster. The composer Joseph Conteloube is most closely associated with which historical region of France through his collections of folk songs published between 1923 and 1954. Oh, its yeah. cities include Vichy and clermont ferrand Auvergne. Correct. The Auvergne is named after the Arverni tribe, which leader of the Arverni was defeated by Julius Caesar at Alessia in 52 BC. No idea. Asterix. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I have no idea. That's Vercingetorix. And finally, the majority of the Auvergne region lies on which large upland plateau, which includes the Doré and Forez mountain ranges? Nominate Ritchie. Massif Central. Correct. Right, another starter question. What eight-letter word is thought to derive from the Arabic for hashish eater? It refers to... Ulster McDade. Assassin. Assassin is correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses this time, Ulster, on monkeys. Firstly, for five points, what is the common name of Nasalis larvatus, a Borneo monkey that has the largest nose by far of any primate? Proboscis. Correct. Living in the Shimokita Peninsula in Japan, the northernmost population of non-human primates belongs to which large genus of old world monkey? Uh, what are the ones that live in the... Macaque? Oh. I think they're macaque. Macaque. Correct. Mantled and Venezuelan red are species of which monkeys in the genus Aloata? They have greatly enlarged lower jaws that help make them one of the noisiest of all primates. Holar monkeys. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> of the space missions that have had a close encounter with Jupiter, only two have gone into orbit around the planet. Name either. Warwick Jackson. Juno. Correct, yes. <laughs> the other one was Galileo. Well done. 
OK, Warwick, your first set of bonuses are on the first sentences of well-known works of thought. In each case, identify the work and its author or co-authors. Firstly, from a work of 1936, the traditional disputes of philosophers are, for the most part, as unwarranted as they are unfruitful. 36, look at this. This is... This sounds like... It could be Wittgenstein. Oh, it could be Wittgenstein. Philosophical Investigations, maybe. Could be, or Tractatus. No, it's not Tractatus. Philosophical Investigations? No, it's Language, Truth and Logic by A.J. Eyre. Secondly, from a work of 1762, man is born free and everywhere he is in chains. The Social Contract. Who is it by? Uh, Rousseau. Correct. Finally, the co-authors and title of the work of 1848, which begins, A Spectre <laughs> is Haunting Europe. Uh, the Communist Manifesto by Marx and Engels. Correct. <laughs> Another starter question. The name of which light shoe originates from the resemblance of the side of its sole to a ship's load line, showing the limit of... Ulster McDade. Plumsall. Correct. Your bonuses are on colours listed on Wikipedia. In each case, name the colour from the description. All three begin with the same letter. Firstly, a shade of pale greyish green, often used to refer to Chinese pottery. It takes its name from a character in a French pastoral novel of the early 17th century. Pale green, grey. Um, siege, no? Siege. Siege. Yeah. Chinese pottery, jade. Jeet. No, 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 that's not a dip. No, it's no common. It's cardinal. Try to see. Try to see. Sage. No, it's celadon. Mm -hmm. Secondly, a bright shade of orange red. Its name is the French for a species of poppy. Cerise. Cerise. No, it's coquelicot. And finally, a shade of mid-blue named after a wild flower. In France, this flower plays a similar role to the poppy as a symbol of remembrance. Cornflower. Cornflower. Cornflower is correct. We want to take a picture around you now. For your picture starter, you'll see the coat of arms of a European capital city. Ten points if you can name the city. Ulster Millican. Berlin. Berlin is right. <laughs> the phonetic similarity between Berlin and the German word for bear makes that coat of arms an example of canting arms, where the images presented make a reference to or pun on the city's name. Your picture bonuses are three more examples of canting arms from German state capitals. Five points for each you can name. Firstly... What's the word for horse? Third. Third. German Frankfurt. No, it's Stuttgart. It's related to Stuta, the German for mayor. Secondly, Castle. Potsdam. Potsdam. No, it's Magdeburg. Mag being German for maiden and Berg, of course, meaning yeah. castle. Finally... It's a monk. It's a What's the word for a, a friar? It's, it's not Munich. It's not Munich. It's not Munich. It's Munich. Munich is correct. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. Kung Wu was the first emperor of which Chinese dynasty? Born a poor peasant, he entered a monastery to avoid starvation during a famine and later rose to prominence in a rebel army. He established his capital at Nanjing and overthrew the Mongol Yuan dynasty. Warren Jackson. Ming. Ming is correct. <laughs> right, your bonuses this time, Warwick, are on the 10th century Latin document known as the Annales Cambriae, or Annals of Wales. A record of the year... A.D. 570 in the annals marks the death of which monk, the author of the overthrow and conquest of Britain? Is it John? No. 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 I've got no. absolutely no idea, so... Gildas. 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 Gildas? Correct. Nice. <laughs> Gildas describes which battle of the early 6th century as having given the Britons some respite against the invading Anglo-Saxons. Usually known by a five-letter name, its site is unknown. 
Pardon? Something on Ethereum, probably. Okay, uh, so not Camlan then. Um, it could be, that's five mm. letters. That's not five letters, that's mm. like seven. Mm. I've got absolutely mm. no idea. Mm. What's a nice five letter word? Uh, Bulge. Bulge. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> Bulge? <laughs> no, it's Baden Hill. Oh. And finally, whom does the Annals mention as a leading figure at Baden and at the Battle of Camlan some 20 years later? That's Gildas awesome. makes no mention of him. That's got to be Arthur. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Arthur. Arthur. Arthur is correct. Ten points for this. The Swiss chemist and physician Philippus Aureolus Theophrastus Bombastus von Hohenheim is more commonly known by what? Rank Salter. Paracelsus. Paracelsus is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on physics. In each case, give the optical term defined. All three answers are French words or names. Firstly, what six-letter word denotes a device formed of two parallel reflectors which, by the effects of interference, will allow only a narrow range of wavelengths to pass through? Oh, it's from a French word. Oh, so it's not a polarizer. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, je ne sais pas. I don't know. No idea. <laughs> a polarizer. <laughs> no, it's an etalon. Uh. Secondly, for five points, a seven letter term that may precede grating or spectrograph, indicating respectively a diffraction grating with widely spaced lines and a device based on such a grating. Do we know? I, I have absolutely no idea. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Just pass. Pass. It's an echelle, or oh. echelon. Okay. And finally, a type of lens formed of annular steps named after its inventor, a French physicist born 1788. Uh, Fresnel. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. What is the common name for the echinoids of the echinoderm phylum, characterised by tube feet and a mouth structure called... Warwick Salter. Starfish? No, you lose no, five points. Not... And a mouth structure called Aristotle's lantern. Their common name comes in part from an old word for a hedgehog. Uh, Ulster Ritchie. Sea urchin. Correct. <laughs> right, so your bonuses this time are on economics. Drawing heavily on psychology, which branch of economics forms the title of a work of 2017 by Michel Baddeley and is concerned with understanding human decision-making more broadly than as a simple rational process? Beyond thought? No, it's behavioural economics. And secondly, an advisor to the Behavioural Insights team in Downing Street, which US academic and theorist wrote the 2015 book Misbehaving, The Making of Behavioural Economics? Daniel Kahneman. Daniel Kahneman. Daniel Kahneman. No, it's Richard Thaler. Which 2008 book did Thaler co-author with Cass Sunstein? It argues that small changes in the choice architecture of society can lead to significant shifts in behaviour. Tipping point. No, it's nudge. Ten points for this. What word entered the language in the late 19th century as a translation of a German term used by Nietzsche in Thus Spoke Zarathustra? It appears in the title of a 19th... Warwick Arribas. Übermensch. No, you lose five points. It appears in the title of a 1903 stage work by George Bernard Shaw. Uh, Ulster McDade. Superman. Superman is correct, which is, of course, what you were getting at, but Superman doesn't appear in the uh, title of the play, of course. Your bonuses are on astronomy. In each case, I want the name of one of the 24 stars in the sky with the greatest apparent magnitude or brightness, Ulster, after the sun, according to the 20th edition of Norton's Star Atlas. Which star in the constellation Lyra has the shortest name among these 24 bright stars? The name has four letters. A star with four letters. Pass. It's Vega. Which star in Cygnus has the greatest intrinsic luminosity among the 24 and is at the greatest distance from our solar system? Sirius. No, it's Deneb. And finally, there are two red supergiants in the list with spectral class M. Name either. We're serious again. No, it's Betelgeuse or Antares. <laughs> right, we're going to take a music round now. For your music starter, you're going to hear a duet from an opera. Ten points if you can identify the composer. Warwick Salter. 
Oh, Offenbach? Offenbach is correct, of course. <laughs> that was from his Tales of Hoffman, which is based on three short stories by the romantic author E.T.A. Hoffman. Your music bonuses are three more classical works inspired by Hoffman's tales. I'd like the composer in each case, please. Firstly, for five, from a ballet. Do we just need to compose it? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky? No, that's Delib. That was the oh. waltz from Coppelia, which yes, is, is based on Hoffman's The Sandman. Whoops. Secondly, I want the composer of this work, please. List? No, that's by Schumann. That was part of his Kaisleriana, inspired by Hoffman's character, Johannes Kreisler. And finally... Is it definitely OK? Fine. Tchaikovsky? Indeed, that was a bit of a nutcracker. <laughs> right, ten points for this. Answer promptly. Counting antiparticles and different colour charges and flavours as distinct particles how many types of quark exist? Quark Salter. 12. No, oh, okay. you lose five points. Sorry. Exist in the standard model of particle physics. Uh, Ulster Jack. Four. No, it's 36. Oh. Another starter question now. The light brown cane sugar Demerara is named after a historical region in which present-day South American country? It was called Land of Water by indigenous peoples and is the only English-speaking country in... Warwick Jackson. Guiana. Guiana is right. <laughs> right, Warwick, your bonuses are on women born in 1917. In each case, name the person from the description. Firstly, the chair of the board of the Washington Post from 1973 to 1991, during which time the paper did much to uncover the Watergate scandal. No idea. Do you know Daniel? No. no, we don't have any idea. Um, Smith. That was Catherine Graham. Secondly, a literary figure born in 1917. Her works include The Heart is a Lonely Hunter and The Ballad of the Sad Cafe. Carson McCullers. Correct. And finally, an exponent of the scat style of jazz singing born in Virginia with Louis Armstrong. She produced a notable duet version of Porgy and Bess. Yeah. Ella Fitzgerald. Correct. Ten points for this. By Greenwich Mean Time, the vernal equinox in the Northern Hemisphere has, in every year since 2008, fallen on what date? It'll switch to the preceding day in the calendar in 2044. Uh, Ulster Jack, 28th October. Anyone like to buzz from... Warwick Jackson. 21st of September. No, it's the 20th of March. Right, ten points for this. A 1960 news report about two Portuguese students sent to prison for seven years for raising glasses in a toast of freedom spurred the barrister Peter Benenson to found which human rights organisation? Ah. Ulster Millican. Amnesty International. Correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on the autobiographies of rock stars, Ulster. Subtitled Volume 1, what was the title of the memoir published by Bob Dylan in 2004? Don't look back. Don't look back. No, it's Chronicles. What three word title is shared by Bruce Springsteen's third studio album and his 2016 autobiography? Born to Run. Correct. The Dirt, Confessions of the World's Most Notorious Rock Band, recounts 20 years of rather wearisome behaviour of Tommy Lee, Nikki Six, and other members of which group? Motley Crue. Motley Crue. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> what three-letter abbreviation links a common name for scandium, yttrium and the lanthanide elements with a phase of sleep characterised by a state... Ulster Jack. R-E-M. Correct. You get a set of bonuses on place names. Around 20 miles long, the Black Isle is a peninsula lying closest to which Scottish city? Inverness. Correct. 
The river Blackwater flows for more than 100 miles and enters the Atlantic at Yall in County Cork. It's often known by the name of which historical province to distinguish it from other rivers of the same name? Historic. Munster. Correct. And finally, a series of ridges between Abergavenny and Hay on Wye, the Black Mountains lie largely within which national park? Brecon Beacons. Correct. We're going to take a picture around. Your picture starts and you'll see a painting. Ten points if you can identify the artist. Uh, Ulster Ritchie. Rossetti. Now, anyone like to buzz from Warwick? Warwick Salter. William Holman Hunt. No, it's by Raphael. Right, we're going to take picture bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points for this starter question. The alphanumeric designation KV62, with the letters standing for the Valley of the Kings, denotes the tomb of which figure of the 14th century? Warwick Jackson. Tuesday Carmoon. Correct. <laughs> you just saw a moment ago one of Raphael's depictions of St George slaying the dragon. For your bonuses, three more paintings of St George. In each case, I want the name of the artist. Firstly... Chagall. Is that definitely okay, you reckon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chagall? No, that's Kandinsky. Oh, Secondly. It's not a cello. It looks medieval, more Renaissance. So, Rossetti? Or do you want an actual reference? Okay, so like. Oh, Tish. 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 Uh, well, that's also not each of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rubens, surely. Uh, oh, you're looking for Rubens. I got one vote for Rubens and one for Velasquez. Oh, Rubens. I, think I, think I think it looks a bit Rubens. Yeah, Rubens. Rubens? Yeah. It is Peter Paul Rubens, yes. <laughs> Ten points for this. On the periodic table, if boron plus carbon is sodium, what is nitrogen plus oxygen? Warwick Salter. Fluorine? Anyone like to buzz from Ulster? <laughs> Ulster Jack. Calcium. No, it's phosphorus. Ten points for this. Logical Investigations is a major work by which philosopher, born in Moravia in 1859, he founded the movement known as Phenomenology? Warwick Arribas. Edmund Husserl. Correct. Nice. Right, your bonuses are on microbiology. What genus of gram-negative bacteria causes cholera? Ooh. Do we know? Uh, no. Uh, um, let's go with C, uh, C, uh, C. elegans. No, it's Vibrio. Oh. What short Latin term denotes the hair-like appendages on bacterial cells by means of which, for example, Vibrio cholerae is able to colonise the small intestine? Oh. Is it a pili? Like, cilia? Isn't it? It's pili. I think, I think it's cilia. Do you reckon? Oh, I don't know. What? Pili? Correct, yes. And finally, the term vibrio may also be used generally to describe a particular shape of bacterium. What is that shape? Vibrio. Uh, I don't know, like straight. Let's go with it. Uh, straight. <laughs> no, they're curved rod. Oh, OK. OK, four minutes to go. Ten points for this. What four-letter name links the highest mountain of Switzerland with a civil rights activist born in Alabama in 1913? Warwick Jackson. Rosa. Correct. <laughs> You get a set of bonuses on Robert Burns, Warwick. Born in 1759 in Alloway, Burns' first attempt at poetry is believed to have been made at the age of 15, after he'd followed his father into what occupation? Uh, Do you want that? Car carpentry. Go for it. Carpentry? No, it was farming. Yeah. Secondly, in his 1791 poem, Tam O'Shanta, based on a folk legend, what nickname is given to the witch Nanny, who chases Tam and rips the tail from his horse? Do you have any ideas? Chart, do you know? Do you have any ideas? No. If not, um, mother. No, it's Cutty Sark. Oh. In 1785, to what animal did Burns dedicate the poem mouse. beginning, mouse. We Sleek It, uh, uh, Timorous? A, a mouse. mouse is correct. Yeah. Ten points for this. The Titan, the Resurrection and the Tragic. Warwick Salter. Marla. Marla is right. <laughs> Get these bonuses, we'll take the lead. They're on China and its neighbours. In each case, name the country and its capital. The Araniko Highway runs for more than 100 kilometres from which capital to the Friendship Bridge at Zhang Mu in the Tibet Autonomous Region? Um, Nepal. Nepal, Kamandu. Uh, Nepal, Kamandu. Correct. 
Which capital is about 400 kilometers north of the Torugat Pass, which links its country to China over the Tian Shan Mountains? Oh, Tian Shan. Um, Tajikistan. I'd say Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Kyrgyzstan, Bishkek. Correct. And finally, the shortest overland route between Beijing and Moscow passes through which other national capital? Uh, uh, Kazakhstan, Astana. Kaz or Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, which do you think? I don't know. Um, which which one should I go for? Kazakhstan, Astana. Kazakhstan and Astana? No, it was oh. Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. <laughs> Ten points for this. Answer promptly to the nearest degree. At what temperature Celsius does liquid water achieve its maximum density? Warwick Arribas. Minus four. No, 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 no. Ulster Jack. Six. No, it's four. Ten points for this. The author of the 2016 book The Girl with the Lower Back Tattoo, which US comedian made her debut as a screenwriter with the 2015 film Trainwreck? Eric Jackson. Tina Fey. No, anyone want to buzz some Ulster? Uh, Ulster McDade. Amy Schumer. Correct. Oh. You get the lead and your bonuses are on phobias, using a jocular coinage that depends on wordplay rather than Greek etymology. What would you fear if you suffered from abophobia? That is A-I-B-O-H-P-H-O-B-I-A. -H -H Come on. Uh, flying, was it? Flying. No, it's palindromes. Xanthophobia is a fear of what colour? Yellow. Yellow. Correct. What would you fear if you suffered from omphalophobia? Omphalophobia, what was the belly button? Fear of belly buttons. Correct, yes. <laughs> Ten points for this. In chemistry, what term denotes the process by which a substance absorbs moisture from the atmosphere until it dissolves and forms a solution? Ulster Ritchie. Deliquescence. Correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on theatre. First staged in 1958 in a production directed by John Gielgud. Five Finger Exercise is an early work by which British playwright? Five Finger Exercise. Come on. Uh, John Osborne. John Osborne. No, it's Peter Schaffer. Which 1964 play by Peter Schaffer portrays the conflict between the Spanish and the Inca in the early 16th century? Empire of the Sun. Let's have it. Empire of the Sun. No, it's the Royal Hunt of the Sun. <laughs> and that the Royal Hunt had 140, but also had 170. You very nearly did it, Warwick. Very, very nearly indeed. And you had some terrific interventions. But we're going to have to say goodbye to you, I'm afraid. Also, congratulations. You storm on to the next stage of the competition. We should look forward to seeing you then. I hope you can join us next time for another second round match. But until then, it's goodbye from Warwick University. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. It's goodbye from Ulster University. Goodbye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>